Hello, everybody. Welcome. My name is uh, Bennett Tchaikovsky, and uh, hopefully I'll be able to get this uh, video going in just a moment. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look. So today we're going to go ahead and look at some new questions or a new question I've created involving owner's equity. Uh, so this presentation is by myself, Bennett Tchaikovsky, also known as the Accounting Professor. This presentation is copyright 2008 to 2024 by Bennett Tchaikovsky. All rights are reserved. Any redistribution is expressly prohibited without my prior written consent. And most importantly, the opinions herein or any terrible jokes are those of myself and not I, anyone else, I, not my employers, including but not limited to the South Orange County Community College District and Irvine Valley College. Okay. So let's take a look at the question we've prepared for ourselves today. And we'll make this a little bit more palatable by using that wrapping feature. Okay. All right. So YYZ had the following transactions during 2028 and 2029. Please prepare the appropriate journal entry. If a journal entry is not required, briefly state why. So when a corporation is formed, I it you basically have to kind of go through and say, well, this is a corporation. It's it has the ability to to do business in a certain state. I'm just going to pause real quick and I'm going to pull up for you an article of incorporation. So here we have uh, this is Snap or Snapchat um, and basically this is something where you're going through and basically it's filing a certificate of incorporation. And when you do this, you basically say we are, we have basically the, here's the name of the company, the address of the registered office, the purpose of the company. Um, this is pretty much boilerplate, but when we kind of start like look down into here, the company is authorized to issue two shares of stock and then you get into these other parts down here where you're kind of going through and can going through and listing other parts. So the this article of incorporation, like once it's going through and you're basically kind of telling the world like, OK, we're doing business and here's how many shares we can go through an issue. There you go. So when a corporation is formed, there's no journal entry required. Rather, we are letting the world know, uh, or letting the world know I, that we have formed a corporation. That's pretty much what we're doing. So, however, when we do talk about shares, I do want to mention this. We have authorized issued and outstanding and the company as of right now at least the one that we're dealing with is able to ha can issue up to 100,000 shares now you might be asking me the question like well Bennett like we're looking at this over here and we see that oh my goodness this is like 70 million shares yeah you can go through and amend and restate this as many times as you want to pay attorneys to help you do so. Uh, but for our purposes here, when we think of authorized shares is that this is the most number of shares that the corporation can issue without going back and uh, talk, going back and uh, amending it to say you can issue more shares. Most companies, when they first start, will start with a relatively low number of shares. For example, I did this a while back for Novata. I think I used 75 shares. Why did I use 75 shares? Because if you did more, there was a tax. So there you go. Okay. So at this point in time, we have 100,000 shares issued. So we would say common stock, uh, common stock. 0.001 par value, 100,000 shares authorized, uh, zeroed, issued, and outstanding. Okay. And when we look at companies, and you, if we look over back over here, we'll find a more of a 
go to a more maybe of a normal filing for our friends at SNAP. But when we say look at this quarterly report over here, you'll see that in the balance sheet, you'll see, okay, stockholders, equity, class A, how many, what's the par, shares authorized, how many issued, how many outstanding, and there you go. Okay, so that's kind of what we're trying to go through and, and do over here. So we're just disclosing that this is what we have going on. Okay, so now let's take a look at the next one. Now on 1228, we issue 30,000 shares to the founder the following day for 0 0.001 per share. Can companies do this? Can I sell it for this low? Sure, if you're the founder of the company and you're just starting out, you can absolutely do that. So as long as it's legit and you don't have other things that are going on, this is not accounting after dark. But when we look at this over here, I when I issue basically shares to the founder, what we have to go through and do is to go through and record this uh, as a journal entry. Here's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna have a date, account, debit, credit. Okay, so my date over here is 1, 2, 28. So we're receiving, so we have to take this from the perspective of if I'm issuing shares and the founder is buying them for 0 0.001. So we're going to be receiving cash of 30,000 times 0 0.001 or 30 bucks. Okay. So we're going to be debiting cash and I'm going to credit common stock at par. So to record share issuance to the founder. Okay. When this happens, right? So what exactly is par? Par is the minimum amount. Like, so if a company goes bankrupt, the shareholder really has no obligation provided that they haven't guaranteed anything. But if, you know, if a company, if a, however, if a shareholder pays below par value, then you get into some problems because they owe, if they buy shares for less than par from the corporation, there's a problem. So when you kind of go through and think about it, right, you generally want to set a par value to be relatively low. Like at Snap, it's 0 0.00001, right? The only companies I've seen that have a high par value is uh, Berkshire Hathaway. And let's see why. Oh, what's the stock price of Berkshire Hathaway? It's almost $700,000, right? Either that or seven cyber trucks. I'm not sure. But coming over here, right, we want to set the par value at a pretty low amount. So this is the journal entry, but let's keep a scorecard. So what's happened to my authorized, issued, and outstanding? Well, my authorized is still going to be the same but I just issued 30,000 shares, right? I issued, the company issued 30,000 shares to its founder. So that means I've issued, and then of those 30,000 shares are held by outsiders, okay? So let's now go to the next one right over here. And as we go through and do more of these, it'll make a lot more sense, so. On 6-30-28, we issued 20,000 shares of common stock, my grammar is terrible, to my friends and family, all of which are accredited investors for $40 per share. So you may be asking yourself, what is an accredited investor? Well, this is a privately held company. Why do I know? Because I've said it's not public, but this is privately held. Right. If you're selling stock to somebody, they have to be so what is an accredited investor? 
Basically, this is a person or entity that has allowed to participate in investments not registered with the Securities and Exchange Commission, right? So you have to have like basically wealth, income, right? So these are these are different things. So if you want to invest in privately held companies, right, you've got to be very careful about how you do it. You may be also required to go through and to basically make certain state filings. But that's enough for this. This is not a law class, even though we might think it might be. But just I will tell you when it comes to dealing with corporation matters, you want to make sure you have an attorney with you. That's not me. Make sure you have the counsel. So we issue 20,000 shares to my friends and family, all of which are accredited investors for $40 per share. So in this case over here, the company is issuing 20,000 shares at $40 per share, or they're gonna be receiving $800,000, okay? So again, 20,000 times 40, this was 30,000 times 0.001. Okay, so now when it comes to recording the other side, like so when we were taking the very first chapters of uh, financial accounting, we would just credit common stock. We're not doing that though anymore. So we're gonna start over here with common stock par. And this is basically going to be 20,000 shares times 0.001 or 20 bucks. Now, what about the rest of the entry? Well, the rest of the entry is going to go to something called APIC or additional paid in capital common stock. And I'll refer to this as APIC, C slash S. Okay, now what do I write in here? It's whatever is be above and beyond the par value. So in this case here, this is going to be 799980 or 800,000 minus 20 bucks. And this is gonna to be to record share issuance. So this is how we go through and we basically record the issuance of common stock. You're gonna show the cash coming into the company. This is very similar to what we did at the very beginning, debit cash, right? So remember, when I'm going through and doing these types of problems over here, I am debiting cash, right? Cash is an asset. I show that increase to cash with a debit. Right, I'm gonna show this increase to cash with a debit. Owner's equity typically has credit balances. I'm crediting the owner's equity accounts over here. So again, instead of writing common stock, we break this up. Why do we break it up? Because legally, right, we have like this thing called common stock at par. We basically show the legal amount that was required to be paid in. And then the excess amount is what we call additional paid in capital, right? So that's what that refers to. Okay, let's come over here and let's go to our next part. And let's also keep our scorecard updated. This will be exciting. So we still have authorized 100,000 shares, but my issued shares are now going to be 30,000 plus 20,000. And my outstanding is I now have 20,000 more shares outstanding or 50,000 shares. And this basically here, this is going to be zero plus 30K. K is thousand, zero plus 30K. That's how we're getting those numbers. Okay. So no pun intended. Let's come over here now. Let's go ahead and look at our next one. Now over here, the company declares a 10 for one forward stock split. Okay. What exactly is that? Well, when we see companies like Berkshire Hathaway, what's the problem with having a $700,000 stock price? 
well, it has a that high of a stock price and a lot of people are going to want it. Therefore, we may want to go through and now this is a bad example, but if the stock price gets too high, companies will split their shares. When a split occurs, the way you want to look at it is that so for these guys here, this is a 10 for one. So for every 10, for every one share, and I'm just going to pause real quick. So when we do a forward stock split, basically what's going to happen is that we're basically going to go through. So basically the authorized is going to go from 100,000 to a million. Or we're basically going to go through and multiply each of these by 10. And then lastly, <laughs> now on the other part of here though, the par value is basically gonna go from 0 0.001 and we're gonna basically divide this by 10 now. I recently have seen some stock splits, so our par value So over this, this is going to basically when we're doing a forward split, this is going to be 100,000 times 10, this is going to be 50,000 times 10, 50,000 outstanding times 10. Okay. So that's what we're going through and do, but this does not require us to do a journal entry. Okay, so what we're gonna now go ahead and do is we're gonna be asked to prepare the balance sheet section for owner's equity um, only as of 12-31-28. Assume that net income during the year was a million dollars and no dividends were paid. So here we go. Like when we're looking at this, the way we're gonna set this up is we're gonna have balance sheet So the way we're going to start this is we're going to say common stock par 1 million shares authorized 500,000 shares issued and outstanding. Okay. So this is basically, and if we're looking at this, the par value is essentially going to be 500,000 times 0 0.0001 or 50. And if we kind of think about it, where did this come from, right? Even after the split, the total amount that's going to par isn't changing. It's going to be this 30, which came from the original issuance, and then 20 from the friends and family. So we have this over here. My next part is going to be additional paid in capital, common stock. And what this is going to represent is right over here, the 799980, right? The only things we had happen is we did one issuance for cash or someone bought it at par, then someone over here, they paid a little bit more for it. So right over here, additional paid in capital, common stock right now. The next part that we're going to have to go through and figure out is that net income was a million dollars. So if we have a statement of retained earnings, right, going back to our very early part, we start out with beginning retained earnings, and this would have been zero, right? Because this is the first year the company was happening, plus our net income. Our net income, it says, was a million dollars. We paid no dividends during 2028. And this is going to give us our ending retained earnings, okay, of a million dollars. So we have retained earnings. So 
So my total owner's equity is going to be 1.8, uh, basically 1.8 million. Okay. Or 1,800,030 bucks. Okay. So that's the very first part of this problem. Okay. So I, there we go. Okay. Now let's go ahead and just kind of for our own sake, once we're coming down over here to 2029, Let's just kind of look over here, our ending balances over here for the authorized, the issued, and outstanding. We're right over here, and this is 1129 balances. Okay, so now what we're going to go through and do is we're going to go through and basically repurchase shares. When we are going through and why do companies repurchase stock? Well, the one I'll give you the very best example of that does this, and if you've seen my videos on this before, I almost always use the same example. And that example would be our friends at the Home Depot. And if we look over here for the Home Depot, you basically say, okay, um, they have basically you see common stock. They have you know, basically authorized 10 billion shares, issued 1,799,000 shares, but outstanding, it's only 993, 993 million. Why is that? It's because they have repurchased 806 million of their own stock, of their own shares. This is something we call treasury stock, meaning that we're taking something that was previously issued and we're bringing it back into the company. We're basically buying back our own shares. And as you can see, the Home Depot has bought back $95 billion of their own stock. So coming over here, we repurchased 50,000 shares of common stock that were previously issued to the friends and family for $5 per share. When it comes to recording this as a journal entry, when it comes to treasury stock, it's relatively straightforward. Okay, so it's basically going to be... <laughs> So over here, we have our date on 3-1-29. We are crediting cash because our cash is going down because we're buying 50,000 shares at five bucks per share. And then the account that we're going to debit is going to be treasury stock. Okay, so over here, to record purchase of treasury of 50,000 shares of treasury stock. Okay. So now post this happening on 3129, the authorized number of shares has not changed. The shares that I've issued has not changed. However, the shares that are outstanding with people outside of the company is no longer 500,000. Why is that? The company has just repurchased 50,000 shares. So my outstanding shares is now going to be 500,000 minus 50,000 or a total here of 450,000 shares outstanding. So when we buy back stock, this is what happens. Okay, so it's going to impact, it's not going to change the issued, but it will change the shares that are outstanding. Okay, so and when we think about issued, it's really the original issuance, right? So these 30,000 shares, these, uh, these another 20,000 shares. So when we really kind of go through and think about it, it's really the original issuance, right? So we've only issued 
uh, basically pre-split, it was 50,000. Post-split, it's like 500. So right over here, this is really like this is the issue part. So let's go through and now look at 6129. So on 6129, we resell 10,000 of the shares that we re that we purchased for $6 per share. So let's go through and take a look at this transaction. So 31 or 6129. Now, I'm receiving cash. How much money am I getting? Well, of this 50,000 that I repurchased, I'm selling 10,000 of those shares. So I'm getting cash of 60,000. Okay, so over here, 10,000 shares times $6 per share. Okay. Okay, so that's my cash. Now, for every debit, I need a credit. What account am I going to go through and credit? Well, the first thing I'm going to go through and do is because I'm reselling the treasury stock I purchased on March 1st, is I'm going to say to myself, well, what did I pay for those shares? Well, over here, I paid five bucks a share. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, 10,000 times five. This is going to give me $50,000. Now I've got a problem. I have here 10,000 bucks. Now, what would I want to call this? And normally what I would want to say is like, well, this is like I made money. I paid five bucks for this and I'm selling it for six. Now, the problem with that is, is that when I'm dealing with my own stock, I can't really record a gain or a loss because it's just too, I don't want to say it's too fishy or it looks too suspect, but that's what I would call it. It's almost like you're manipulating. So instead, we're going to credit additional paid in capital treasury stock. So right over here to record issuance, uh, to record sale of treasury stock. Okay, so I'm putting another of these 10,000 shares out there. Let's come and take a look at what's going to happen over here to this part. Authorized does not change. Issued does not change. However, I just put out 10,000 of these 50,000 I pulled back in out into the market. So this is going to be 450 plus 10,000 or 460. Okay, so that's where that number is coming from. Okay, so coming over here. Now we get over here to 10,129. I'm now reselling 20,000 shares for $2 per share. Okay, so on coming over here, using the same kind of format. So let's go through and do the easy part first. I'm reselling 20,000 shares for $2 per share. So the cash I'm receiving is going to be $40,000. Okay, so this is 20,000 shares times $2 per share. Okay, so I resold them. That's how much cash I receive. Now, what did I pay for that treasury stock? Well, 
I'm basically, these were shares I bought on 3129, and I originally bought these back for $5 per share. So over here, this is going to be 20,000 times five. Okay. Now, right, coming over here, for every credit, I need an equal number of debits. Now we think about this. I'm now selling these shares for less than what I bought than I repurchased them for. However, similar to this, we can't recognize gains and we don't recognize losses when we sell our own stock. So the way I'm going to approach this question is what I'm going to do is that if I have additional paid in capital treasury stock, and this came from 6129, the first thing I'm gonna do is I wanna make this account go down to zero, right? I'm gonna make this account go down to zero. The way I'm gonna do that is I'm going to debit additional paid in capital treasury stock for 10 grand, okay? Now, the last part here, right? So we're going to take a pick treasury stock to zero. Now, the next thing I have to do is I need a $50,000 to balance. So in terms of balancing my this account, I cannot record a loss. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to debit retained earnings. And that's what I'm going to go through to do to balance. So this is going to be record sale of treasury stock. Okay, so this is what a company would do is that if they're going through and then reselling their treasury shares, this is not at a loss. They're selling at what they less than what they paid for them. We don't call it a gain or a loss because we don't do that when we're dealing with our own shares. So on 10 one my authorized... And my issued have not changed. They're still going to be a million and 500,000. These are generally only going to be, the issued will really only be changed as if we're originally issuing shares initially. But our outstanding is over here, I'm going to have 460,000 plus 20,000 resold. So now I have outstanding 480,000 shares very important to do in terms of computation. So I've got 480,000 shares outstanding. Okay, let's go through and take a look now on this next one. So on 12 we go through and declare a dividend of 50 cents per share to shareholders of record on 12 15 29 and the dividend will pay on 12 26 29 now on the lies my accounting instructor told you back in the day from chapters one and two how did i have you record dividends we would debit dividends and we would credit cash right we're going to kind of do that but there's another step when i declare a dividend Right when I declare a dividend on 12 1 29, I'm essentially creating a liability, right? And the basically the liability is going to basically be well, once I declare it, I've got to pay it. But when we look at these three dates over here, when I declare a dividend, that's I'm telling the world, hey, I'm going to pay a dividend of 50 cents per share. To those of you who hold the shares on 1215 and the dividend's going to pay on 1226. So this is not going to go through and affect any of our authorized issued or outstanding shares. However, when I'm basically going over here, my dividend, when I declare the dividend, I'm going to take my outstanding shares. Like, why don't I use issued? Well, I bought back 20,000. I bought back 50. I resold 30, so I'm still holding on to 20. I'm not going to do anything with those 20, right? I'm not going to pay myself a dividend. So this is going to be 480,000 shares outstanding 
times 50 cents per share. Now, I'm not, when I declare it, I'm not paying it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to credit dividends payable. And this is going to be to record dividend declared. Okay. So now the date of record, 12, 15, 29. This is for what we call the transfer agent. Right, the transfer agent is the one who holds all the records of who owns the stock. So there's going to be no entry for record keeper or the transfer agent only. So we're not going to do anything with that. Now, when we pay the dividend, right, so coming over here, we're now going through and paying the dividend on 12 26 29 What's happening? Well, my cash is going to go down by 240000 But at the same time over here, once I pay it, there's no longer going to be a dividend payable. So when we went through and did this before, we would debit dividends and we credit cash, right? But now we've got this interim account. And it's just because we have the date of declaration, the date of record, and then the date of payment. Okay, so we've got that over here. Over here, during the year ended 12-31-29, we had reported net income of 2 million, and we're asked to prepare the balance sheet section for owner's equity only. So, Let's go through and let's make our life a little bit easier. And we'll go ahead and copy up this work. We'll just make this uh, as of 1231.28. So let's copy this same structure. Call this 1231.29. OK. Now, my common stock at par is going to be a little bit different. Why is it going to be? different. So it's 500,000 shares issued and 480,000 shares outstanding. Okay, so coming over here, the amount that I've taken to common stock at par has not changed. This is still going to be shown over here at 50. Right, so my common stock at par has not changed, right? Because I didn't, none of the entries here, I was just kind of dealing with some treasury stock. Nothing else here really happened. Okay, so now that's going to be my common stock at par. My additional paid in capital common stock also has not changed. It's still going to be 799980 but we introduced ourselves to some new accounts. And this is going to be our treasury stock, OK? When we look at the treasury stock account, right, let's see exactly what was going on with our treasury stock. So we bought back shares originally over here on 3129 for 250,000. Okay. We then went through and sold shares of treasury stock over here on 6129 and then we also had a sale on 10129. So we were crediting treasury stock over here for 50,000. And then on 10 one it was for 100000 So the amount of treasury stock I have left is going to be $100,000 right now. This is where it's really important to remind ourselves. When we're dealing with treasury stock, right, we kind of look at this assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. ER, DC, right? 
when I look at owner's equity, these are typically going to have credit balances. However, when it comes to treasury stock, it shows as a negative. Why? Because it has a debit balance, because we're reflecting shares we've repurchased. So over here, we're going to show treasury stock. We can say over here at cost, and this would be 20,000 shares. And this is going to be at 100,000. Okay. Generally, I'm okay if you're taking my class at this stage. If you just said for financial accounting, I'm just cool if you just write in a negative 200,000. Okay. Now, let's go through and take a look at retained earnings. Okay. So, our beginning retained earnings is not going to be zero because we were operating last year. So our retained earnings had an opening balance of a million dollars. Now, what else went on? Well, we had net income. The net income, it tells us, was two million. Okay. Now, we also have over here dividends. Our dividends over here amounted to 240000 But let's not forget, we also have another adjustment. Less resale of treasury stock. Because remember, we had a loss, but we can't call it a loss. Right? We went over here and we debited retain earnings for 50,000. Remember, retain earnings is an owner's equity account. It's going to have a credit balance. So when we're going through and paying dividends, when these get closed out to retain earnings, that's what's going to happen. So our ending retained earnings is going to be a million of our beginning plus the 2 million of net income minus the 240 of dividends plus the 50 negative 50 for the loss on or not the loss but we sold the treasury stock for less than what we paid for it so over here this is going to be 2 million 710 so over here our total owners equity is going to be the common stock par additional paid in capital stock Paying capital common stock, less the treasury stock or the shares we've repurchased, plus the retained earnings or three million for ten thirty. So this is the comprehensive problem from that kind of hopefully will teach you everything you need to know about owner's equity uh, from a financial accounting standpoint. So if you have questions, please feel free to leave them in those comments, and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Have a great day.